the sky is filled with many wonders. This series will teach you how to find these wonders using astronomical charts. You don't need an expensive go-to scope to enjoy the night sky. This course will teach you how to find objects yourself using astronomical charts and the technique known as star hopping. The easiest beginner tool is a set of binoculars. They're self-contained and portable. Gary Saranek has a wonderful book on using binoculars. I'll give more information on this book in the credits at the end of this video. If you'd like a closer view of astronomical objects, then you must use a telescope. I talk about kinds of telescopes and how to avoid initial purchase mistakes in another lecture. The telescope will only allow you to look at a small portion of the sky at any one time. Using a finder will help you point the scope more quickly. There are two types of finders, red dot and magnifying. A red dot projects a dot, cross, or circles on a piece of plastic. When you look through this finder, the dot will appear to be overlaid on a portion of the sky. The red dot allows you to quickly move the scope to a particular part of the sky. A Telrad type finder has circles that represent degrees in the sky. With a Telrad, you can measure distances from reference points. Most objects will be too dim to see directly. While you will learn how to find objects using just the red dot, some objects will require that you start at a known point and then move from star field to star field. This is called star hopping and is the point of this video. A magnifying finder is much like a one eyepiece binocular it will allow you to see dimmer stars. This will give you more patterns to use to fine-tune the position of your scope. I strongly recommend the Ryan 950 right angle finder. This is inexpensive with good optical quality. It does not invert the image so it's easier to use. Finally, your neck will thank you for the better viewing angle. Most scopes are sold with one but not both of these. Can you get by with that? Yes, but you will find that having both will allow you to find objects much faster. The next piece of equipment you will need is a good set of charts. Each of these maps the location of deep sky objects and stars. For the moment it's enough to know that the charts depict the relative location of each plotted object. Each chart has conventions of the minimum magnitude of stars and deep space objects that are plotted. It's important to know these, especially with paper charts, so you do not waste time trying to see something that cannot be seen or get lost in a star field that contains more stars than plotted. Like a map of the Earth, all charts have to introduce some distortion to map from a circular sky to a flat surface. The wider the field of view, the more the view may be distorted. This is not a fatal flaw, much as Mercator charts are still useful, but you have to be aware of it. Charts are available either in book form or as computer programs. Each form has advantages and disadvantages. Paper charts have the advantage of portability, do not need batteries, and are not a potentially bright source of light while you're observing. The disadvantage of paper charts is that they do not give you a time and location corrected view of the sky. This means you will almost have to always rotate your book to agree with what you see in the sky. They also break the sky into segments, much like a road map book. Another disadvantage of paper charts is that the representation is fixed. The dimmest star in the pocket sky atlas is slightly deeper than a good visual sky. The larger charts in Uranometria are about what you would see using the Ryan finder in an average sky. If you are in a worse or better sky, you'll have to mentally correct the image. I'm going to talk more about paper charts in a later section in this lecture. Planetarium programs have the advantage that they are interactive. They can display time and location corrected views of the sky. In this video, I'll be highlighting two programs, SkyMap Pro version 11 and SkyTools version 3. These are the two programs I use in the field. I prefer using software since it provides both very wide and very dense views seamlessly across the entire sky. They can also include real-time features such as the location of comets and the moons of planets. There are two disadvantages to using a computer. First is you're using a computer. A computer is heavy, fragile, and requires power. A book may be the same weight, but you can throw it in your suitcase. 
If you're traveling, it's possible to use your planetarium program to create a custom set of paper charts. The chart set that Sky Tools produces gives you all the charts you need to find an object tailored for a particular location and viewing time. I've also produced chart sets using SkyMap Pro. The second problem with laptops is light. Unfiltered laptops are too bright, even on the night setting. Always use some type of red filter as shown here. You can find more information on laptop filters in the credits. Now that we have a chart, what does it tell you? All types of charts present the sky in a similar manner. The chart here was generated by SkyMap Pro. For the next few minutes, let's see what information is available on the charts. Constellation figures are usually drawn on the chart to help you visualize the boundaries. Symbols mark the different types of objects. Let's look at some examples. Stars are represented by dots. The larger the star's image, the brighter the star. The smallest dot represents the dimmest star charted. In the Pocket Sky Atlas, this is magnitude 7. Uranometria plots to magnitude 5.5 on the wider charts and 9.7 on the dimmer charts. Planetarium programs can, within limits, select the dimmest star to plot. Double stars have a horizontal line through the dot. Globular clusters are represented by a circle with a cross in it. Open clusters are represented by dotted circles or shapes. Bright nebula are represented by squares or by enclosed shapes. This drawing shows both types of representation. Enclosed shapes are used when the nebula would have discernible shape at the resolution displayed. Galaxies are represented by an oval. Most charts try to correctly scale the size of the oval to the current view. Notice how the orientation of the galaxies on this chart matches the orientation from the digital sky survey photo. Finally, planetary nebula are represented by a circle with outside lines. These are the most common kinds of objects. See the chart for how other types of objects are represented. Computer programs can orient charts to agree with what you would see at a particular time of day and location. The lines in this chart point to the zenith, which is at the top of the chart. At this time and location, the Big Dipper is in the western sky. The field of view wraps past north to include constellations on the other side of the pole. Paper charts are always oriented with the north at the top. You'll have to turn the chart to agree with the sky. The poles will be represented by special charts using a different projection to reduce distortion. This concludes the basics. In the next section I will show you how to use the charts to perform a sample star hop.